Yeah, good, Chris. Thank you very yeah, much. And can got, you see my screen? Got the Bitcoin charts up there, Chris. Uh, thank yep. you for thank Excellent. you for coming back. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry about. I don't know what technically happened there, um, but that's we're okay. good now. That's okay. You know, uh, anyone uh, anyone could have an issue with it. Uh, what's important is that you uh, many times over the years have known what's going on in different markets. Uh, uh, I you know I first started hearing and following you back in your Prector days. So how long ago was that? Uh well, I'm, I met Prechter, uh, Bob Prechter, uh, two days before the October mini crash in 1989. And okay. I told him that the market was about to drop 10% in a few days. And mm -hmm. um, that happened two days after that. And that began our relationship. And uh, so that's a, a while ago. Yeah, so that, yeah, that, that is a while ago. So that shows uh, how old you and I are, Chris. Uh, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you brought some Bitcoin charts, and, uh, and for people that don't know what your work is based on, uh, your Twitter handle is at SpiralCal for Spiral Calendar, which is basically um, some type of lunar calendar. Am I correct, Chris? Uh, well, it's, it's yes. Um, um, my original observation, I, you know, I was an option trader in in the pits um, in San Francisco in the 1980s. I mean, I started as a runner, as a 20-something kid, and became a floor broker and then a market maker. And, Sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, it's a path many of us took. And, yeah. Uh, um, and it, it's so valuable, you know, To and, and I, I used to joke that they shouldn't give economics uh, PhDs out unless people fulfill a requirement to stand in a pit with their with their net lick at at risk of a one percent standard deviation mood and and that would that would solve a lot of this uh, uh, efficient market nonsense so um, but I've been very tuned in and, and experiencing the crash of, of 1987 where markets topped on new moons the, and in 1929 also and exploring that relationship between 29 and 87 and those crashes and, and that was the, the seed of my research into irrational market behavior and panics and crashes and manias and uh, you know this this Bitcoin chart uh, uh, I I looked through the charts that I showed the last time we talked, Dale, and I don't know, that was September, October, and uh, I showed this chart um, in our last interview um, about how Bitcoin had a tendency for these blow-offs to uh, peak on new moons. And, um, you know, subsequently, here's here's what happened in December right. um, when Bitcoin, the, 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 the high of highs, that just complete crazy mania we witnessed and uh, the top tick was i think about 17 hours uh, ahead of the of the new moon which was early in the morning of the 18th of december so um but but the spiral calendar is is something more than just just the lunar phases and uh, here's here's really the, the the quick and dirty of it um, nice. which is ultimately what Bitcoin did, it, which was to, f to form what I call a, a perfect spiral, that f tremendous parabolic move um, into that new moon high. Now, these distances, these numbers, they represent, we're measuring time in uh, lunar months. Uh, and, okay. uh, and in lunar months, these distances from the lows all to this full moon are square roots of Fibonacci numbers. Uh, I mean, here's the actual Fibonacci sequence, and this right. is the actual uh, distances from these lows, each one, and it, just the entire, the only one that missed was was the, uh, the eight, um, you know, and that should have been right about here, and we accelerated off of that. But when yeah, I wrote the yeah. book 25 Chris, years is, ago, it's, it's kind of like whatever you believe in or don't believe that uh, this universe uh, was created by a mathematician or it was definitely a mathematician that uh, everything really has this rhythm 
Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, math is 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 what we're made of. I mean, I I and this is in the book um, at the end. I really think that, you know, it's we are the children of of father time and, and mother gravity, as it were. And and so what this is, it's it's the interplay of time and gravity. Uh, and but Bitcoin is extraordinary because it formed this perfect pattern and it, it i when i wrote the book i never thought we'd see something like this there's too much noise in data there's too much other influences on prices interest rates and fundamentals and whatever but when bitcoin came along it was just pure emotion um and that allowed it to form this extraordinary mania that we saw unfold in the fourth quarter last year and i think it also was a it, this occurred because a there was no friction in the market and um i don't know if you follow oh yeah you couldn't short story. really short it you really couldn't short it until right. you couldn't right? short it but also the, this tether business, I don't know how much you know about these tethers, which were I, I played printed tether out of ball thin air. Yeah, and, tether ball in junior high I played, Chris. And 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 these tethers that were linked to the dollar, in a sense, were printed, and they, they produced a, a frictionless situation that allowed it to, you know, it, it, it's like blowing hot air onto a flame, and you create a furnace, and you get higher temperatures. So um, there was no chance for for the for the parabola to break early it was just it had so much fuel to it but what was fascinating is once the spiral was complete they kept printing tethers they printed them in january like they were going out of style but it no longer mattered because the psychology of the market had had flipped the the irrational uh, mania had ended okay can i ask you something uh did gan because you know Gann, and I, I know that you're you you probably studied some of W. D. Gann because of your time work. Did he use lunar lunar calendars because he believed time was more important than price? Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, okay. I I followed Gann. I went down that path for a ways, and then I said, I'm I'm making my own path. So okay, uh, cool. Uh, you're a maverick, man. A little bit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a beautiful example of, yeah, you know, perfect. Uh, maybe it's more like tulip mania than any of the other market events that we saw. Or do you just see uh, this being uh, a parallel to like 29 inequities? And oh, I, th I think this, I mean, this was unusual because this market was able to penetrate much further. You know, uh, okay. people all around the world can trade Bitcoin. There are exchanges in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of exchanges. There are no minimum requirements. Uh, there, there are people trading, you know, two dollar accounts and 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 trying to scalp a penny. Um, so it, it it really has a tremendously large input of of data. You know, I just think the whole Bitcoin time series has been a has been an extraordinary piece of data to study for uh, fear and greed behavior. And, and I mean, I, I just want to point out, you know, that there are there are nine points of reference here, nine lows that all relate to this one foot, what I call the focus point of the full moon. So, you know, these 10 points, there's just no way that this is a random accidental um, occurrence. And and most importantly, the fact is it, it fits the structure that was outlined in the book that I wrote 25 years before this this happened. So the, this spiral was a, a tremendous affirmation of the work I did years and years ago. You know, I full thought. Moon was, OK, so full moon lows and new moon highs is well, what well, that's is what you look at. Yeah, generally the, the full moon and the winter solstice are are negative influences summer solstice new moons are positive but it's the timing relationships and these these spiral constructs that that start affecting things and um uh, yeah so that's okay. that's kind of a short thing but I, I also want to talk today about some other aspects of irrational market behavior and and some other inputs and um so this is kind of interesting. The the blue is the S&P 500 
And uh, uh, this dotted line is just raw title data from uh, Battery Park in, in New York for, for 2018. And um, it's it's pretty extraordinary. And I'm, this title works, you know, a fellow named Robert Taylor wrote a, a novel called Paradigm. And uh, in the appendix, he has so this interesting approach to markets with using title data. And, and so I've um, that's the basis of, of of what you're seeing here, and then I've you know kind of gone on from there. But um, we're in this period. Both you know, Bitcoin is one example. The S and P is another example of just very very irrational behavior. And and this type of analysis is very effective when everybody's irrational. But then there'll be you know months and months, or like 2017, when this type of work doesn't doesn't uh, sync up at all, and markets are not irrational, and people are are just all kind of you know calm and collected. Interesting. Okay, so it's portending some type of rally uh, high into the 11th sometime, or at least at least you know uh, strength. I mean, it, okay. uh, you know, and then it, it doesn't it, tell you magnitude. It just no, exactly. You yeah, there's there's no comment here. But now I've taken this a bit further in the next chart. So. Uh, starting with the top clip here, this the started line is that same title data we just looked at. Now the blue, this is my salooner model, and we all see seasonal charts where they take, say, the last 20 years of data, average it, and say, this is the seasonal chart for the Dow, say, when it'll be weak in October, it'll be strong in January, or whatever. But my salooner model is it's a seasonal model, it's the same seasonal data, but it's only constructed from years that have the same lunar phases as this year. So um, if, wow. if the full moon is on the, the 30th of March, then the only uh, inputs into the seasonal model are years where the full moon is close to the 30th of March. So we can see on the top, we can see those years, and the tides will be similar in those years, but not the same because there's there's many inputs, but the circles really show us the periods where, where the tides and in past years seem to have been effective. So, and, and those were translated here to the arrows. And now the, so this line is a sum of these two values. It's a weighted sum of both the Salerno model and the tides. Uh, so that gives me, I call this sort of my combo. And then here's this year's uh, Dow plotted against that, and um, yeah, so this is that rally up into around the 11th, that relative strength, not looking at extent, but just just ex right. But we can see it's it's really been it's captured that rhythm very very well. But, but again, I want to make the point: this works during irrational periods, and then when things calm down, this will go completely out of sync and have zero value. Um, but it is just fascinating, and it really though points to the idea that that it is these lunar and timing influences are um, the cause, if you will, of the irrationality. Um, someone on Twitter. Any, uh, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was just thinking, Chris, uh, if you see any similarities between one, as I look at your different models for a peak, I believe you know around you know the 11th of April. I believe the top in the in the market was around the 11th in February. Is that true? Uh, so is there a parallel in 87 when we peaked in uh, August and had the crash two months later in October that we're peaked, we peaked in February and we could have uh, April could be the kickoff of a massive decline? Well, I, I, I don't think so. The, okay. The interesting thing, uh, this year's Salooner model, if you plot out the whole year, um, this year is, is it actually, it, it stays pretty positive for, for most of the year. I mean, I, I think we're, we're maybe near the end of this, this, this sort of turbulent period. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, that's dicey. Uh, you know, this stuff is just inputs. And then ultimately, you know, you, you still got to watch. Go back to your and, charts. You still have to go back to price, don't you? Always, so, always, always, because yeah. that's that's where the accounting happens. And that's right. 
So, I mean, all your intricate work are giving you um, ideas of what's happening under the surface, projecting into the future. But when it comes down to it, you're, you know, you still need price confirmation to take trades off this. Exactly. And otherwise, um, uh, you don't last very long in this business, as you know. And yeah. uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was a great parabola in in uh, Bitcoin, Chris. I know you. Pr you pr oh, you want to show some other things? Well, but, yeah. Well, well, but yeah, I, we can... I was just I was just curious, you know, in this business, you're you know, what have you done for me lately? So we came off this parabola and we've been, you know, uh, down pretty significantly. I don't know what 50, 60 percent. Um, is this uh, when par parabolic moves in? Uh, could this be over for quite some time before? Oh, I, I think it is over for quite some time, but it's it's very interesting. I you know, and and watching the tape day by day, uh, and 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 the sentiment around these cryptocurrencies. I mean, I I think without the tether business, it probably would have fallen further and faster than it has. And but when you watch the tape, um, the buyers in Bitcoin. You know, they don't look like they're trying to accumulate price. They're not trying to accumulate Bitcoin. They're trying to prevent it from falling. I mean, you okay. know, there's a, there's a a, a very uh, big like uh, the BOJ, it, like the BOJ and the Nikkei. Oh, exactly. There is a large vested interest in keeping this alive and and making it work. And um, but against that, you know, this is it's just been distributing, 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 and um, you know, I'm watching it trying to find a low, but I don't think it has yet. Okay, thank you for going back to that, Chris. So we could go to your next slide you wanted to show. Yeah, um, you know, something else interesting I've been tracking, and I show these charts on Twitter, uh, is is gold versus the various correlations. And you know, gold and dollar yen has correlated very highly over the years. Uh, gold inverted correlated to tips. And then some of these uh, correlations have broken down in recent months. Um, and what's interesting is is that the uh, uh, gold is now correlating much tighter with the Chinese yuan than it than it ever has. And uh, you know, here's going back a couple of years. You know, there used to be no relationship between uh, gold and the yuan, and now they're they're becoming very tight. And in fact, I think. Um, uh, uh, another fellow on Twitter, David Brady, made the, the point. I think he's correct that that the Chinese are, are actively pegging their currency now to gold, um, which is which is a pretty interesting idea, and that may put pressure um, in coming months uh, on the ability of Western central banks to to keep the price of gold, uh, uh, you know, to, to to keep a lid on it. Although shorter term. I, I've listened to some of the commentary earlier here on on your webinar, and I agree. You know, the, the dollar is poised for a rally, and that's that's negative for the metals in 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 yeah, the near term. Certainly, pretty close correlation right now. So the yuan and the dollar. Yeah, I'm thinking one more wash. You know, silver maybe to you know 1550, gold uh, 13, uh, 1280, 1250 in there, and I like this chart because it's a trade I'm stalking and have been waiting for things to get cheaper. Also, I've noticed, Chris, that the silver shares, despite the weakness in the bullion, they're even holding up better than the gold shares. Are, are you seeing anything there on maybe the gold-silver ratio? I don't really. I don't. I don't look at that. Uh, that's okay. not something I. I look at. But uh, you know, I mean, I. I'm in agreement that just longer, longer term. Yeah, I mean, silver. Silver is probably the much better place to be, just in, in the historical. Uh, okay. Uh, how that ratio. And, and do you. Do you look at. Uh, you know, I was schooled that uh, uh, in a bull market, the shares. Uh, shares always lead the underlying commodity and it's been the other way around gold's been strong and miners have been weak uh, any comment on on that well you know it, it, that may be the, the etfs might might be a reason you know because it used to be if you wanted to play gold and you didn't have a futures account you you traded the miners and now oh. you people those people trade the etfs 
great point. You know, I never thought of that. that it's so obvious, but a great point. So um, I'm, I tell you what, Chris, after this interview, I'm going to be watching the one uh, because, it, you know, I was watching the yen and that, you know, correlations are great till they stop working and and then you, you don't know for a while. And it could be costly because you're counting on that correlation and all of a sudden there's a disconnect and you're going, wow, you know, I mean, this is telling me it should be doing that, but it's not anymore. So, yep, exactly. You know, uh, was there anything else you wanted to? I, well, I, I think I've got one more here. Yeah. Well, this is just, uh, you know, I have do candle charts where um, I have really a set of four different types of signals that, and, and then I mark them here with arrows. And uh, then I look for turns where they cluster close together. So, you know, these are sort of these little, uh, these mark RSI divergences, the, the, the uh, little crosses. Oh, and, okay. Um, so, you know, we're getting some, it's, it's trying to bottom here. This is just an oscillator I call the cycle trap. It's a, it's a proprietary oscillator. It's, it's pretty good, but it's still just an oscillator. So, you know, Bitcoin's trying to bottom, but these buy signals are spread out. And so you get the effective turns when they're tight together. And that was, that was up here at 10,000. Right. The, the cycle trap turned over. You got a bearish RSI. You got a sell through the net line. You know, three signals all in two bars. That's Confl strong. Yeah, confluence. Yep. Yep. So that's right. that's also part of a, my approach and and the bread and butter that I do. You know, your approach is uh, fascinating to me, Chris. And you know, if you, you would like, uh, perhaps you could show your website and how people could subscribe to your work and or follow you on Twitter, uh, the best way for people to keep up with the spiral calendar, excellent esoteric work, and uh, a humble guide to boot. So, well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I take losses on my trades all the time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we all do. And if people who don't admit it, run away from them. Yeah, oh, yeah. spiralcalendar.com well, is the website. Yeah. And, uh, Oh, all lots right. more information there. And there's some free. You can read the chapter one of the book, the Spiral Calendar. Uh, you can read chapter one of the book there. And you know that book. It's been out 25 years, and the copies are starting to get scarce. If you don't have one, um, it, you might wow. want to add it to your bookshelf. Yeah, there won't be another edition, so it's going to. Well, end there's going to be there's going to be something, but I I don't think I'm going to reissue the the original book as is i think that was sort of a classic i think that there's going to be something but it'll be different and i want an autograph copy uh if you can get an uh, uh, yes um if you <laughs> order the book through like amazon that? just shoot me an email and say i'd like it autographed and we can all right it. all right well chris uh thank you so much for coming back and i hope we could do it again maybe late summer early fall, see what uh, the skies are telling you. I encourage people to have an open mind to the rhythm of the universe that Chris Carolyn has the pulse of and some really interesting looks underneath the surface of either a candle or a bar. So thanks again, Chris, for coming out of fire community and thanks for showing me the new correlation with gold. I'll, I'll be making the most out of it. Uh, yeah, you're very welcome, Dale, and uh, I, I enjoyed our visits. Thank you so much, Chris. Good hunting. May pips rain down on you, my trading warrior brother. Thanks, Dale. All right, buddy. So that's a wrap for us here on Thursday. See everyone for the NFP tomorrow morning. And remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh, I'll see you in the private chat. Blake's there, Steve's there. And have a great day. Good hunting to everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. TGIF NFP.